Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to create uh, one of these little book vases. It's probably one of those um, assignments that are really quite easy and uh, students will have fun doing it. Um, I actually thought about doing this because I could not send clay home to my students, but they needed to continue to create something tactile and still related to ceramics. Um, the first thing you will need <coughs> is a book about 200 page thick. I'm using my son's origami Star Wars book. <coughs> it's about 215 pages. Uh, the reason why so many pages is that you want to be able to make sure that the book has enough pages to fan out all the way around like this. Next, you'll need a cardboard that's higher than the book to make sure that you have the height. The next thing you'll need is a pen knife. Pen knife extremely sharp, uh, so that is really easy to cut. And uh, next thing we do is design your template. So the first thing I do is mark the height. Next thing you do is to mark across. Once you mark across, then think of your design or outline Now, after you're doing the outline, you will want to have a, uh, a base that's slightly wide because it is supported by paper. So you want it to be somewhat relatively strong, okay? Now, what I'm gonna keep is the positive right here. This is gonna be one half of my vase right here. It's gonna be mirrored this side, giving me something that thick. Let's begin by cutting. You can use a cutting board from the kitchen to cut through this. Now here is one side. This is the one side mirrored by the other. So I'll try on, make sure you have the height. I need to trim the foot just a tad. Now I have it. I can begin cutting. To begin, you will wanna start, not necessarily from the outside, but about two or three pages in. From here, you will press the template to the back cover because there's gonna be a little bit offset as you can see. And then you can begin cutting as soon as you, uh, your edges are flush. Don't apply too much pressure or cut too many pages at one time you will want to have maximum control with your knife so your edges are consistent. Once you tug on it, that's when you finish. Right after you take the pages off, make sure you get a little bit of those pieces that have stayed. Now, what I will do is cut three more, three or four more. Before you transfer the template, you will want to be able to cut about six pages in. After six pages, you can reinsert your template 
so that you do remain so you remain always accurate. You will want to make sure that your knife is facing straight down, not angled in. After about 20 pages, as you can see, this can easily become your guide. So you can just put this aside and use this as your outline. Remember to keep the knife straight down at 90 degree angle. Do not bevel it in or out. So every time, every now and then, flip some pages back so you can maintain that angle straight in. Every now and then, I would flip the page to the very last cut, and I would try and take note of where the edges or corners that I have left untouched. So in this case, it's here and here. So I will focus pressure on those areas. Be careful putting too much pressure because your knife could slip away from you. Once again, I did focus on those sticking points, so pages lift right off quite easily. As you can see, this gives me a mental note of where my sticking points are. Every now and then, when you open up the pages, crease the spine. This will help you fan it out later on. This is crucial in getting an even fan all the way around the piece. Here's a good pointer for you. As soon as your pages start to rip from cutting, you will need to change your knife. I've noticed that a couple of pages have now started to rip as I cut. It's time to change my knife. I have just cut through the last page here, now I can flip this side and cut the beginning pages. And as you can see, when you squeeze it together, it's pretty straight, uh, straight through without any beveling. Notice the little bits here? This can either be shaved down just a tad with a really sharp razor, like carving wood but you have to compress it together. Sometimes when you compress it hard enough, you can even use sandpaper to clean that out. Your very next step should be creasing. Creasing this so that once you open it up, as you can see, it still wants to remain straight. You wanna break up all that glue and binding so that you can go all the way around uniformly. So this part will take some time. I want you guys to notice that I have cut these edges at a point because it was really easy for me to cut it at a straight line rather than these angled. What I'm gonna do now is trim the little tips here, as you can see, to give me more of a solid ending because these tips is going to curl on me later on. A nice flat edge. And also on the lip. Compress it together, hold it tight, and in a sawing action, just cut straight through. This is so much better than doing it as you cut through the pages. So this part's 
are left in the end. Continue to break apart the pages. As you can see, this is somewhat softer now and can come together. Look at that profile, really well done. When you're fanning it out, you can tell which areas are still stuck together. Those are the areas you should be targeting when creasing. Once you're ready to pull your book together, notice that if I pull just the first cover like this, it won't really do much. So what I do is pull the cover and the first two pages and the last two pages with it. What you wanna do is pull some force towards each other so that this will fan out quite well. So the last few pages is connected to these little sections that are sewn together. So you wanna be able to staple that in. So what I do is push the stapler as far in as I, as I can. So I can pull them together, line them up, hit, and in this case right here, it helps to put glue in them as well, but if you don't have glue at home, staple will be sufficient. So now, take some time, once again, in making this even. So here's the final result of what we did today. As you can see, nice little shape, wide base for stability, and it holds up fairly well. Good fanning in terms of the pieces. Um, if you really wanna challenge your students, I suggest uh, teaching a little bit of uh, photo compositions, um, filters and whatnot that benefits the piece when sending you the results. Also, you could ask them to create a nice touch one of these little origami pieces, flowers, for a splash of color. Follow my students' works at mrp.ceramics. I hope this was very helpful to you. And good luck, send me comments for any questions. Thank you.